Hi guys, John Cassius saw my little time lapse video of this uh, solar rocking thing and wanted me to do a build video for it. Well, I'm not going to because there really is nothing much to it. In fact, the most complicated thing is the stand and that's covered in a different video. If you look at the video description, there's a link to my heat engines series, where there's quite a few um, novelties, I think I can call them that, that use the fact that this type of plastic bends when it heats, or straightens when it heats, depending on which way round you want to look at it. Uh, this plastic comes from this sort of a bag. These particular ones had coffee beans in them. So they're silver on the inside and coloured on the outside. And because they're some sort of double layer, if you um, stress them a bit so that they're curved, when you heat them, they straighten up. So what happens here is this one, the arms straighten out. When they straighten out, that changes the centre of gravity. And so when they're curled up like that, the centre of gravity is nearer the bottom, because we've got a counterweight down there. And when they straighten up, just the weight in those arms is enough to move the centre of gravity. So when they're up like that, the centre of gravity is at the top end here. So it tilts. Now, the arm itself is just a barbecue skewer or a piece of bamboo. The plastic is just attached to the top, in this case with a pin. You could hot glue it or any sort of glue. And to get the balance in the right place, I've got a bit of blue tack there that I moved up and down until it actually balanced about right. The needle that's pushed through the middle sits on a little slot cut in the top of the CD here and originally sat in a slot on the other side as well. So it's a pair of slots and it would sit across like that. But to reduce the friction I've actually got a broken neodymium magnet here and I'm just using that to hold itself in place and then the point of the needle is held in place by the magnetism. The rest of it, it's just three CDs. Two of them I've cut a little bit off the bottom, so we've got a flat edge, and glued it to the other CD. And the only reason I've done that is so I've got a clear stand for it so you can see the full motion. Um, I've scraped the paint off the CD so it's clear, but that's what that's about. Any um, stand would do, as long as the friction's as low as possible. So there you go. And so check the video description, and there's links to the other heat engines, as we've been calling them, because they work by heat. When they heat up, they change shape, and when they cool down, they change shape. And if you arrange it so the sun hits it up here, and when it comes round like this, it goes into shadow, then it cools down in the shadow, the arms curl up, goes up like that. When it gets to the top, the sun hits it, the arms open up, so it teeters over. Teeter-totter is another word for it. There's lots of different versions. They don't all use heat. Uh, some use water evaporation. So 
So you have a look in my video description. I think I've said that three or four times now. There is a link to my heat engines series or playlist. And there's quite a few there by other people. There's Lid Motor, uh, Attila Blade, Mr. Odelkin, I think it is. So I've put a little collection in there. They're all very simple to make and fun to watch.